Have you ever encountered someone who was in such a state of shock or anxiety that they started to hyperventilate? These individuals would be so frantic that it would be difficult, it seems, to catch a breath and they would be almost on the brink of consciousness and unconsciousness. To resolve this, sometimes a healthcare provider or friend or supporter would say, breathe, just breathe, inhale, exhale, breathe. And by the very act of deliberate, intentional breathing, this person would then come to a state of calm and relative relaxation. Today, we are going to explore two spiritual disciplines which will help us to breathe in a world gone mad. What are these spiritual disciplines? I am speaking of prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. Prayer is often called the breath of the soul. This is where one is able to breathe, to inhale and exhale. The first passage of scripture that we turn to for encouragement in this regard is found in the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let's turn there, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Here is what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Let's look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here, uh, writing to the Philippians, Paul is reminding them not to be excited or overly anxious for anything, but to rely on this twofold breathing strategy of prayer and supplication. You see, in praying, we are coming to God recognizing that He has all the answers and that we are at His disposal. In praying, we are recognizing that He is sovereign, He rules over all, and we are yielding ourselves to His divine purpose and will. In praying, we are casting all of our concerns and our cares and our anxieties and the things that keep us up at night on Him because He cares for us. In praying, we are knowing we can ask with confidence. For if we ask anything in His name, according to His will, He will do it for us. What a beautiful privilege this is. And it is our privilege to enjoy prayer every moment of every day. Here is why we know that is true. Turning to the second passage of Scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and let's look at what verse 17 says. Three words. Pray without ceasing. Isn't that wonderful? It's an entreaty to be in a prayerful attitude and posture every moment of every day. Now, this is not speaking to a posture of physically bowing and closing the eyes and bending the knees. That's not what it's speaking. It's talking about a heart posture. It's a mentality. It is a spiritual predisposition to seeking God, even in the busy avenues of our lives and in the mundane avenues and areas of our lives. Seeking Him wanting to know his will, breathing in confidence, in spiritual assurance that God is with us. Prayer. Prayer is the breath of the soul. And we are encouraged to practice this discipline every day. Now to the other discipline of meditation. I submit that meditation is where we remind ourselves of what we know to be true and where we are able to gain even greater faith in that knowing and in that awareness. 
Meditation allows us to put all of the circumstances of our lives in, in correct perspective, where we can then cognitively and in a rational way put the facts together and allow faith and facts to form a beautiful symphony that brings confidence in the will of God and in his purpose for our lives. Let's look at this passage of scripture found in the Psalms. Psalm, the 77th division. 77th division of the Psalms. And here we get a sneak preview into a conversation that David seems to be having with himself, where he is consoling himself at the memory of God's redemptive power. This is the power of meditation. Let us turn again. Psalm 77 and verse 4. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years and ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. What is he meditating about? Here we go. Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy ceased forever? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? And he goes on beyond verse 9 to begin to affirm what he knows to be true. These are, in a sense, maybe interrogative questions, but in a sense, they seem to be rhetorical questions also. Questions that necessarily don't need a specific response because he is going in to affirm what he knows to be true. Here is what he says. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. In verse 12, I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your deeds. And so he is going back into his mental archives and reminding himself of what the Lord has already done. So the circumstances that are before him that may seem daunting and foreboding and, and the ones that may, may seem so, so challenging, he then looks at the record that God has left. And he says, no, I, shall the Lord cast off forever? Surely he will not. He, his mercies are tender and they're new every morning. And this is what he does. And that's the power of meditation. We have today the twofold uh, breathing strategy of prayer and meditation. Prayer to get to our our point of equilibrium and mental balance. It says we, he will keep the one in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, the one who trusts in him. That's the promise of the scriptures and meditation. Now recalling and recounting the times and the seasons that God manifested himself, the way he provided, the way he showed up sometimes miraculously in our behalf, that gives us confidence and deepens our faith in the awareness that he's a God who cannot change and does not change. So today we have that privilege. Two additional disciplines that will make all the difference in our Christian journey. Disciplines that should be practiced daily. The discipline of prayer, seeking God. The discipline of meditation, considering his works, his hand, how he has manifested himself in the past. And that will give us confidence for our present and our future. I like to read the auto autobiographies of many of the great uh, leaders of the past. And it was sometimes commented about uh, John Wesley, a uh, famous uh, preacher way back in the day, uh, who spent typically the first four hours of his day in prayer. People may say, wow, who has that amount of time to spend praying? But if we are really about God's business and about 
interceding for each other and praying for ourselves, our families, we will make the time and take the time. It was Martin Luther who, who is uh, quoted as saying, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours of my day in prayer. Oh, what a stark contrast to what we see sometimes. Sometimes we have so much to do, we forget to pray. What a tragedy. Today, we are encouraged to pick up these disciplines, prayer and meditation, so that we may truly breathe again. Shall we pray about it? Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer, where we could come directly to you without any special access needed or appointment made. God, where we may lay before you the desires of our hearts, the things that cause us anxiety, where we may lay them at your feet. And we thank you now for also the gift of meditation, where we may contemplate your goodness, your love, where we may reflect on what you have done. And even now, Lord God, where we may project into the future and see how you may possibly even lead us and empower us and strengthen us and guide us. So Father, I pray that even now we will take these disciplines to heart and that today we will add them to our daily regimen, prayer and meditation, especially on your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this privilege. Guide us now from victory to victory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.